data is generated everywhere. You can think about machine-generated data, human-generated data, social media, structured data, unstructured data, and many more types. Which data should be analyzed at the edge and which should be analyzed at the cloud? Ted Dunning, CTO for Esmeral Data Fabric at HP, is here to talk us through and share his experience. Welcome, Ted. Well, howdy. Ted, going in more detail about all these different types of formats, can you share a more practical example of, of data in motion? Yeah, I, I think that that's becoming a, a, a bigger topic lately. A lot of people have a lot more data than they used to have. At one extreme, we have customers who are autonomous vehicle development projects, and they move enormous amounts of data from the edge, but they acquire even more. They acquire it each vehicle that they have, and they have hundreds, is acquiring data at a, a several gigabytes per second. And that adds up to tens of petabytes over all the vehicles. And so they reduce that by about 90% at the edge and only then move only, in quotes there, uh, about five to 10 petabytes per day back to the core. And there, and I think this is very common, the key element about which data they move back to the core is they move the most important data, the ones that the data that will help them with their machine learning. And that's purely due to limits on the practicality. And we see that same sort of thing play out in other systems as well, factories or social data. Again, what stays at the edge is often the stuff that isn't so necessary and it's important to be able to have enough bandwidth to pass the important data. So there's filtering at the edge. And one of the, the challenges within organizations is to move data from one place to the other. And if you look and speak to different enterprises, what are the typical challenges that they are facing by moving their data around? Well, one problem is just the raw storage. Uh, we see people with as many as several hundreds of petabytes of data moving into the exabyte range before too long. So that alone becomes a big problem. But most people are down in the 10 petabytes, one petabytes range. And there the, the, the raw challenge of scale isn't as big, but they still very commonly wind up with a lot of objects. So uh, some the people we see actually get a couple billion new files per day. So they, they clearly have to store a lot of those things. Uh, and so these the different kinds of scale are an issue. Uh, that leads to tiering that, that people need to do to get to lower cost forms of storage, either different encodings or different hardware. And it also leads to difficulties in analyzing that data effectively. Uh, partly due to the question of how to keep track of where all the data is. And look a little bit more into the future. What kind of scenarios should organizations be prepared for? And what type of actions should they take now to handle these type of situations? I think it's really important that companies expect to be pulling more and more data from the edge and that they plan for this and they plan for that kind of scale so that they can be ready when in the future that becomes important to their business. We see this across all kinds of businesses from financial to manufacturing to new developments like this autonomous vehicles that I mentioned. Even things as simple as grocery stores are using more and more data at the edge where it's generated, where they directly interface with their customers. And even if companies aren't doing that now, I expect them to be doing that in the future because business doesn't really happen in a data center and data does happen where the business is. And so you wind up with edge data pretty quickly in almost every business. Thank you, Ted. And I totally agree data in motion is going to grow more and more and more into into the near future thanks for sharing your experience your view and for the audience thank you for watching and we're looking forward to seeing you next time